Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM, WNOV, and W293CX 106.5. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is your destination for all things gardening. Over 925 videos, short and long format, under the radio tab, under the highlights, and just everything in between. Well, let's talk about do's and don'ts of canning. Uh, there's a lot of things in life if you don't know the rules and you break them, it's not a big deal. Canning is not one of those genres in which you can break the rules and be okay. We're going we're gonna to go over what you should do and what you shouldn't do and the reasons why those uh, parameters are set for you. So we talked earlier about canning is a science. Right, so canning is a science. Um, and that basically means that when you're cooking, say you're making some, you're making some homemade uh, pasta sauce you might toss in a few extra things with canning you, you do not want to do that right and we want to follow the recipe to the T yes so you want to follow the recipe and then also you want to read that recipe before you get started we've come across times where we start a recipe and then it says you have to let it sit in salt water for three hours if you start that recipe at the wrong time of day, you might be finishing that recipe at... Well, at, uh, Jerusalem artichoke relish, right. you, you have to let the, the artichoke soak for 24 hours. And I think it's something similar for some sweet pickles, too. You have to let them sit in a brine as well. So you're not going to get this done in a couple hours on a Sunday night before you go to work on Monday morning. No, that would uh, be... So, yeah. and, and in addition to that, you want to make sure you have all the ingredients. Yes. Because you just can't skip an ingredient because you don't have it because that alters the whole science of this whole preserving thing and you may have pickles that are bad the longevity is not there Th there's a reason why and they're they're the recipes are the way they are and then on top of that with not not just pickles or something um you want to think about and we'll talk about this too is using the proper method bo boiling water versus pressure canning so pressure canning is for low acid foods and that ensures that you can have the, the proper things removed from it and it's going to be properly stored because there's good things, bad things in your soil, good things, bad things in your food. When it comes to food preserving where you're not using it in your refrigerator or freezer, when you're storing it on a shelf, you want to make sure those things are stored properly and it's gone to the right temperature. Right. And when in doubt, toss it out. This is pretty much with any type of food, but it's especially important with your canned goods in which you have already canned that are on the shelf or that your friend or family member or neighbor have gave you. We open our canned goods up and the first thing we do is we smell it. That's a universal, your body is keen to, you know if something doesn't smell right. Smell isn't always going to be the, the insurity. No, but, but it you, makes but a difference. It does so, make a difference. You know if something immediately is off, off tilter. You know something doesn't smell quite right. The other thing you want to look at is the color of it. Does it look like tomatoes? Does it look like corn? I mean, is the color relatively close? Like if you see close? something weird no. floating in the top of the jar, you, you don't want to eat that. Right. And, and even if you get, you know, jars of canned goods from a basement from your aunt who has passed away and they're labeled 1996 don't be a oh i'm not going to be a wasteful person pour that stuff out the jars are still good don't use the contents in the jar let's be smart about this so the other thing is i want to mention is be be clean when you can i know that seems obvious but make sure that you have you know your whatever you're using to stir and scoop that that's clean your jars are nice and clean everything that you use is clean and as sterile as possible your cats your dogs are away out of the room right any pets um any any sort of situation that could you know leave something foreign in your jar like a dog or cat or if you you don't want to just you know bring out the whatever you cooked dinner last night and that possibly could have something contaminated in it Steril make sure, sterilization make sure it's clean and that's Look. that's in any food prep really and then if you're if you are canning anything with meat in it you want to make sure that you're doing it right and then that food is um is safe as well so don't you know have some chicken that's been sitting out for a long time and think oh, i'm just going to can this now now with the meat let's let's just clarify you can't water bath meat you have to there's a pressure canning procedure right. in which you have to go with so it's not just a oh i'm just going to throw this in a jar and water bath it for 30 minutes it doesn't work that way but that's a yeah that's a whole whole different thing right but i want to make people aware that you just can't go to the uh, woodman's and pick up some you know hamburger and throw it in a jar and water bath it there's 
there's a reason why you have to do these things a certain procedure. And you want to use uh, proper canning jars a- and lids and ca- equipment. Um, some people will think, okay, I have this old jar here. I can can in it. That's not a good idea. It might be like a mayonnaise jar or a spaghetti jar. You don't know if it's going to be, if it's for canning. So you want to use mason jars or canning jars, as they're called, because they are meant to take the hit and be used over and over again. And you can tell, you know, if you've got an old glass mayonnaise jar, it's a very thin-walled jar. And these canning jars are very thick-walled. And we're talking about the, the clear glass. We're not talking about that old blue jar that we've, most of us are familiar with seeing those jars have a h- lot of hairline fractures you can collect those if you want um, the value there's not really a whole lot of value because so many thousands were made but you don't want to use those because those hairline cracks when under pressure under you know 212 degree boiling water those will bust the jars um, now the new fancy purple jars that was their right the, the the special edition re-release purple they did purple blue and green those are fine yeah. And you can tell the difference. They don't look, as I guess, as old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they definitely look a they lot look newer. They look modern. They look modern, yes. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to mention, you want to follow a recipe that's been published, usually within the past, I would say, safely 10 years. Now, why if, is that? Why can't I use great-grandmother's recipe on canning tomatoes? Well, things have changed. Uh, the food safety has changed, and the science has changed. Like, for example, you growing up, you said you guys water bath canning water bath, green beans. Water bath green beans. I believe it was for three hours. Well, now that the the United States Department of uh, the National Center yeah, for Home Food Preservation has now frowned upon that, and green beans can only be pressure canned safely, and we have tried it, right? And we have you can you know you, with the with the beans in the water bath you can pickle them, mm-hmm. you can't just can them, right? Yeah, and we have found that we don't like either way. We freeze our green beans. Because they're, they've got that snap, that crack, that pop that we're looking for. We just feel that the beans that we pressure canned and the dilly beans, well, we didn't, didn't care much for the dilly beans just because it was too garlicky and, and pickly. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know why I didn't like them. But anyway, we did, they're, they're just, we, but with the so canning, with we that, didn't like With that being said, yeah. um, when I talk about high acid versus low acid, if you have a pickled recipe, you can certainly, um, you know, from a trusted source, you can certainly, you can certainly can that with the water bath canning. I'm not saying that you can't water bath can things that have uh, addition of acid or sugar to them and the re- a good recipe will tell you that now wh- where is the best place that we can go if if i've got a recipe that's been passed down or found online how do i know if it is a trusted source if it's legit what's how do i know if it's safe so if it's some random blog with a recipe i'm not going to trust that unless it says this has been taken from uh, resources resor- from resources from blah blah blah. So one good resource is the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Another good resource is freshpreserving.com, which is the the ball canning jar website. They have a lot of good recipes on there. Um, and then their books, the ball canning books. Better Homes and Gardens has a lot of good recipes as well. And SB can S- yeah S so like uh. Santa, I think she's in Santa Barbara. So okay. SB Canning, she's a master food preserver in Southern California. She has tons of recipes on her website. So all of those are good resources. And if you ever have any questions, you can certainly email me, and I will definitely uh, provide good information for you. Yeah, you can email at twvgradio at gmail dot com with that, as well as we'll be able to get you'll be able to get a hold of uh, the guests coming up, uh, Christina Ward. She'll be able to verify whether or not um, a recipe is safe or not as well. And I just want to touch yeah. that that re- uh, being safe is, is utmost important. Uh, things like botulism and other bad things live in your soil, as we've discussed. You know, there's good things and bad things in your soil. And when it comes to something like botulism, that's not something you want to mess with. And you might think that doesn't exist anymore. But there's been cases in the last less than five years where people have, have died because of it. Because of improper canning procedures. Uh, and they just took shortcuts, and they thought, oh, I'll just do it this way, and it didn't, because not doing it right, those pathogens survived the procedure and then was consumed by the, well, it wasn't just the person that canned it, it was a, a, a luncheon 
I got a bunch of people sick in Colorado a couple of years ago because of the improper canning procedures. So, right. And I just, and I'm not trying to scare anybody. No. I, I grew up in the city. I never canned until I met Joey. And now I feel co- fully confident in what I'm doing. I, I did take some classes and I've done a lot of reading on it. And I've, I've definitely learned the skill. But the thing is, is that I always keep in the back, back of my mind that you have to be safe. And not trying to scare you, turn you away from canning. It's just something that does need to be addressed. Now, when, we, when we're looking at canning jars, let's talk about canning jars for a minute before, before we take a break. What, where, where's the best place that we can get canning jars? Maybe we don't want to go somewhere and pay full price. What, what's another alternative in which we can get actual canning jars? Sure. So you can check out things like rummage sales. There's also Craigslist. We found a number of j- uh, jars on Craigslist. And then you never know. You could ask around at your work. You could ask around at your church. It's wherever. amazing how many people have canning jars yeah. in their house, and they have never canned a, a thing in their life. Right. And it is very true. We've gone to estate sales, and even that, remember that one rummage sale you went to, and they had, like, hundreds? Uh-huh. Yeah. So you, you don't know. People just have this stuff sitting around, and they might have some jars in their basement or attic, and you don't know. So if you... If you come across somebody that's like, oh, my blah, blah, blah used to can, ask them if they have any jars. Right. And, you know, we uh, may be in the exception to the rule. Last year, we canned 310 jars of produce out of our garden. Uh, we've got, I think right now, somewhere around 700 jars total in the house. Now, the reason why we have so many, and I'll, I'll explain this, when we go to estate sales or yard sales, we don't do this anymore because we've got to the point where we're satisfied with the number of jars we just didn't go buy five or six jars if there was an allotment of 50 or 100 jars we would buy them all because we got a much better deal on the jars because we bought all of them versus buying seven or eight here and nine or ten there now with that allotment you've got some jars that were old managed jars or old blue jars or ones that were not canning uh, safe or safe canning jars but Overall, it was well worth, you know, pennies on the dollar versus what you would buy at a convenient uh, at a store. Right. That's that's exactly it. And you also get some really neat looking jars too. So. Oh yeah, you, and they and they are actually canning jars. You know, bicentennial jars, uh, different type of things. So uh, we want that to be uh, relevant. You know, be safe, be smart. Canning is fun. It is money saving. The more you do it, and it's great to enjoy that fresh opened jar of produce in the dead of winter or any time during the year. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, then click on the Listen Live button, and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well. Also, go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the Simple Radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our Radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.